to the Do It All Dad Year podcast. Dad-friendly entertainment for you and me. And I'm your host, Michael Kornbluth. And this is episode 23, Unsuitable Cover Letter Material. Been applying to some jobs lately. And the automatic response when you apply to a job is... We will contact you to schedule an interview if you're a suitable fit. So that's where the route that's took hold as far as inspiring my latest and greatest podcast episode. But before we get to unsuitable cover letter material, let's talk about the world, the greater world around us, uh, before we uh, get ultra personal on my behalf. The Knicks will pick ninth overall. In the 2018 draft. Does as much for me as Michelle Obama is passing on running for 2020. Obama wants in God we trust removed from our currency. So he can put an accomplishment on his resume. Which lately has begun to resemble the fuzzy, rapidly fading family pick from Back to the Future. Why did the U.S. have to move the embassy to Jerusalem now? To see if Obama can still get heart palpitations on his strict almond smoothie diet. Father-son talk. Meeting with Russian lawyers in Trump Tower is a pussy riot in the making. The ruler of Turkey says Islamic countries should review their relations with Israel. You mean no more summer loving? Having a blast. I can't sing. I was not blessed in that department, obviously. The ruler of Turkey is urging the Islamic world to unite against Israel. Cool. Obama can give his entire summit speech in Farsi. Iran claims it can destroy Israel in eight minutes. Obama's going to be hard now through Ramadan. So every... I don't do this every day. I'm trying to do it every day. But every day with my kids, I have three of them. We took my son Arthur out of pre-K. And I try to go over letters of the day. And I use three sources of books. I have a Yiddish dictionary, which is fantastic. And then I've got... Words every fourth grader should know. And then I got the the source. So anyway, I'm not like that organized, so I jump around. Sometimes I have my son pick letters, but uh, it, it's a great exercise because it actually gets me familiar with words. And I'm actually able to examine and think about the real meanings. And they are they've proven from where I stand incredible spark plugs for creative expression in the form of jokes. And I'll start uh, sampling away so you can see I'm not completely full of it. So here we go. Dada, what does caress mean? To stroke affectionately. Think of running your fingers through dad's hair because I'm your dreamy fill-in for Kurt Russell. My daughter Matilda loves Kurt Russell. All she needed to see him is him in a tank top and overboard and the rest is history. uh, She is smitten for Kurt. Two nights ago, she asked me to give her a, uh, a back massage. And I said, uh, what did I say? I told her to uh, ask Kurt Russell instead. Yeah. So, Dada, what does careless mean? Dada, what does careless mean? Think sloppy, m- marked by insufficient attention, like Hillary taking another spill because she doesn't read the labels on... Hot Devil IPAs. Dada, what does cringe mean? Shiver out of embarrassment every time a Chelsea Handler tweet appears in my Twitter feed. Straining for any speck of intelligence to pierce through to justify her net worth on Google. Dada, what does cancel mean? To remove... Erase, invalidate, 
Think of only praising Obama's pen for the lowest black unemployment numbers in 45 years. Dada, what does compassion mean? It's trying to help somebody in need whenever you can personalize their pain. So that's why Hillary lost again. So like I said, going through any dictionary, thesaurus, Yiddish dictionary, at random, can produce an incredible amount of uh, comedy gold. If you just use some elbow grease and actually do the work. So, and I remember like reading one time about like some hip hop guy, some rapper, could have been like Meek Mill. This is during my uh, hardcore uh, like Jay Z phase, and I think I remember like his exact line was was that he would just like lock himself in a room and just like study the dictionary, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I, I wish I had a photographic memory and that I had studied the dictionary, the encyclopedia, the source, and the Bible forward and back as a kid. But you know, my dad had to uh, you know sit on the couch and. Watch a Nick suck up the joint for the most part, and my mom had to read her uh, her boring history books, and it never really occurred to them to force their uh, the firstborn, who's growing up in the uh, suburban soft confines of Westchester County, to actually spend less time watching different strokes when I had no supervision, and to actually, you know, feed my brain and soul, and not just rely on lazy tenure teachers who expect to prepare me for uh, life in the concrete jungle. Concrete jungle, with the living is highness. Really wish I could sing. Thank God my daughter can. So, this is a uh, leaked HR joke. You always hear about all these uh, leaks coming from the White House. So this is a leaked HR joke. In my honor. <laughs> Michael Kornbluth is an old, bitter, unexceptional, mean-spirited candidate. He's like John McCain. Minus the brand name recognition and fat daughter. Hey now. Trump should address all the self-hating Jews at our next State of the Union who blew off the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem as no-show nobodies. Converted, proud, strong, resplendent, doesn't eat pork anymore Ivanka is a super Jew in comparison. If I only checked my Twitter feed before shooting hoop yesterday, I could have blamed my airball miss on tornado warnings ahead. Two seconds later, I run for shelter toward my car, gagging on a full-blown twister. My instinct fought swallowing, in case you were wondering. John Mulaney, the kid, good old John Mulaney, the next great one, the uh, Jerry Seinfeld heir apparent. My, John Mulaney says, there are times I wish the election had gone the other way. Too bad America was swum back to a less politically correct, more prosperous, secure direction. I like to dump on John Mulaney, and his TV show really did suck. But I saw a stand-up a long time ago when I was doing bringer shows at Broadway Comedy Club. And he was really going for the kishkas, meaning he didn't have this, like, persona yet. And it was definitely not edgeless. And I remember he had, like, one joke about, like, crocking a chair over someone's back. And I was, I was in awe. I, I thought it was really great. And he was really cool in a cameo on Crashing recently, where I thought he finally exuded some, like, big-time uh, asshole-powered gravitas, which uh, I think is a... Uh, all of a sudden, there was, like, a darker hue. He seemed a little bit more complex and nuanced to me, so I thought that was a really positive step in uh, John Mulaney's, you know, career uh, evolution, uh, if you will. So, again, this is episode 23. I'm rocking them up over here. Uh, this is, again, episode 23. Unsuitable cover letter material. So, let's get to that. Pronto. Dada. Why are you suitable for a content writer job at Vineyard Vines? Isn't kitesurfing a must-have skill for the job? Also, 
Mama isn't a butterface. Nor did you marry Mama for her parents' money because Baba always cries poverty. Daddy, why are you suitable for a content writer job at Vineyard Vines? Because I created their new billboard in Times Square. Picture Camelot, chilling in the Cape. Headline reads, Old money isn't his money. Vineyard Vines, dress for new success. Obviously, they would be an ideal advertiser for this show. If I could actually get a new notable, sometime this century, Apple. Uh, does Apple Shadow Band podcast? If they did, um, I would definitely qualify for it. So, Daddy, why are you a suitable fit for a content writer job at Vineyard Vines? You haven't worn a tie in two years. Now, if Vineyard Vines made wine, the writing would pour out of your lushy heart, no problem. And you'd obviously have plenty of life experience to extrapolate or to draw from. And now I'm no longer being funny. Daddy, why are you suitable for a content writer job at Vineyard Vines? Because I'm not an uptight Gentile who bores you to sleep through instantaneous osmosis, for starters. Also apply for a job at a Norwegian Air. Uh, Dada, why are you a suitable fit for a senior PR manager job with Norwegian Air? Because you've been to Norway once, unlike the poser socialist Bernie Sanders? Daddy, why are you a suitable fit for a senior PR manager job with Norwegian Air? Is a passport showing you've actually left the country once in seven years the only stamp of approval they need? Dada, why are you a suitable fit for a senior PR manager job with Norwegian Air? Because I'm not a heroin addict strung out on Nordic death metal, but can still wax poetic about the glorious guitar shredded stylings of Man of War in a Vineyard Vines troll time. The ruler of Turkey. I don't want to talk about it anymore because I will get very angry and I do not want to sound repetitive. So on Mother's Day, I call my mom, got out of the way as fast as humanly possible. And then I'm thinking to myself, thanks a lot, Twitter. I love being talked down on by two mothers on an empty stomach before breakfast. Knowing I spend more time mothering my uh, three kids than all of them combined. My wife obviously has to bring bacon, veggie bacon. She has to provide veggie bacon for the family. So that joke was not supposed to be directed towards my, uh, my lovely wife, Natalia Duffy, but... If we're going to assess actual time on the home front, if we're going to compare myself versus my mother in Arizona and my wife, it would obviously be me. That, that doesn't mean that my wife is any less of an uh, amazing uh, provider, giver, lover, supporter, backer, a motor uh, for me uh, and our lovely three children. So... I was able to hang out with the wife last night for a little bit, and uh, it was a great time. I, If I don't seem as uh, edgy today, if I don't seem as uh, engulfed with rage, <laughs> it's because uh, my wife shared a very interesting reveal last night. And her reveal was, she told me that at times she will sneak into the bathroom so she could eavesdrop to hear me doing this podcast. And up until this point, you know, my wife has not made any comments about the podcast because she has not heard any of them. I mean, she's too busy. You know, she's, she's a working mom. She's a mother of three. And I also, you know, don't want to like freak her out. She also like doesn't like my incessant, you know, Obama and Hillary Hammer time tackles bashing either. So you could say over time, I've learned to, you know, uh, sometimes not be so obnoxious and to show uh, the slightest glimmer of sensitivity to my audience and who and, and an understanding of who this material is for 
and as a whole, it's not for her <laughs> as much as she loves me. So, so this is the uh, Do It All Dad Year podcast, dad friendly entertainment for you and me. Control. I don't know why I keep on stumbling over that word. This is two times in two days. Controlling our kids through comedy can make our kids great again. And why do I struggle saying control? I would say I struggle with saying that because I have been obsessed with conquering fear and not being controlled by my fears. And that's why every time I do this podcast, I don't do any edits. It's just one run and that's that. And they always say pressure creates diamonds. And that definitely helps when you don't have a safety net. So that's one thing. And also as a kid, I took my SATs untimed. So it basically gave me all the time in the world to second guess how not smart I felt throughout that entire test taking process. <laughs> By the time I was done taking my math SATs, my friends had already declared their majors during their sophomore year in college. <laughs> I love that joke, and it's older than Yiddish. But I read this great line by this uh, rabbi. They call him the Rebbe. Well, on this, they call him the uh, Rabbi Schneerson. And his, he wrote this book that my grandmother gave for me. Books are the best gifts. They really are. And he talks about fear. He talks about all this fear that like humans have. Like We invest so much fear into thinking whether someone's going to like us or love us. And he says that that's really stupid to really give so much power to strangers or friends or even family members for that matter. Because human beings by their very nature are mercurial. Their feelings are constantly changing. And I know that firsthand from when I worked as an IT headhunter, and I would cold call strangers out of the blue, Friday, always the best day. And why is that? Because people are more at ease, and they're excited to rejoin their family, or if they're single, to you know, pounce on a uh, tight new puss in the, in the big city. So the my point being here is that, and my words of wisdom, which aren't mine, they stem from the great Rabbi Schneerson, who a lot of Jews consider the Messiah, is that don't stop fretting about what other people think all the time. I just got uh, Roger Stone's book. It's basically a collection of all of his uh, like wise maxims. And one, of, and one of them is never apologize, always go on the attack. And I think that's very true. And the key is no hesitation. So I was talking about learning words before, relearning words. And then I was reading uh, Hesitate uh, to my son. And hesitate is, means to act slow and to stall and to be like slow to speak or act because you're unsure of yourself. So and when I think back to like my stand-up and times that I faltered, it's because I could have had a really strong joke in the beginning where if I were to read it off a piece of paper, it's well-structured, it's got the punch on and everything, good point involved. But if I didn't deliver that joke with extreme confidence. If there was any perception ever of me not being 5,000% cocksure, then you are essentially digging yourself a preliminary grave. And when that happens, good luck trying to dig yourself out of it. And that's one of the reasons why Donald Trump is so effective. You don't really hear him stammering at all whatsoever. He's the antithesis of stammering compared to Barack Obama, obviously. So one of my words of wisdom here, folks, no hesitation, always go on the attack. And the only person, and there, oh, this is the one overriding shining point here by the great Rabbi Mendel Schneerson, is that in the end, the only person that you should truly care about making happy is God. <laughs> so as long as you've got that relationship in place, 
You're acknowledging him on a daily basis. You're giving your thanks and praises. You're acknowledging your faults. You're asking for forgiveness. Doing some meditation in the morning, taking your cold shower, trying to visualize great new positive things you want to do with your life to move forward. Making sure God knows that you do have great intentions about serving the greater good and that you're not necessarily content reading about all these great employment numbers when you're a father of three, an unemployed comedian that's still so broke who's who be. When you pray to God and you acknowledge God and you say, God, I want to be of great service. I know this podcast is a starting point. Obviously, I need to do more with it and I need to bring home the bacon. I would like to actually be able to afford to pay for my children's college education, but say it's not worth it (laughs) and have them already hooked up uh, in show business under my stand-up staffer productions enterprise where my kids could act in short films and and TV shows or my daughter or I could bankroll my daughter's uh, graphic uh, novelist uh, empire to start off with before she breaks out on her own but I think it's a really great thing if you could build a business and keep in the family it's a beautiful thing and I want mine to be entertainment and I'm telling my kids right now, this is my new vision. I want the Larry Bird basketball court. He's got this great basketball court that he built for himself in Indiana. And I want that court for my children. So you can invite your friends over all the time. And you can play at night. And I think that'd be the coolest. Now, God, I know I'm supposed to forgive my parents. And I'm supposed to honor them. But it drives me freaking nuts. That the, my only request when they said they were moving to Arizona, which basically meant they were going to be absentee grandparents, was that they get a hoop. And of course, they had to choose the move-in ready house that was gorgeous, that was super spacious, that was a major upgrade from the place in Westchester, and is a gated community. And then, of course, my only request oh, with that in the pool fence, which they decided to neglect. Uh, they did not fulfill. So, but that's okay. Because I'm going to provide that for you, Samuel, Matilda, and Arthur. And it is going to be, and we're going to have a huge party. We're going to hire Slash to play the national anthem for the debut. And you'll have that charged memory forever. And if we become really big time, maybe we could hire Slash for to play for the 4th of July. <laughs> and obviously, not invite the in-laws because like, when they come, my father-in-law feels compelled to wear his uh, Man City gear, which I think is a tad tasteless, knowing that he was able to basically uh, live the American dream uh, when he was a green card uh, SAP worker who came here from England and Australia after. So, uh, God bless uh, Israel, God bless Donald Trump, I love our president, Godspeed, you're doing a great job, keep up the good work, I can't wait for the deep state to ultimately ultimately become drained to the core. Natalia Anna Duffy, you made my year by saying that you eavesdrop and listen to this podcast. That means everything. And my last note here, folks, is that in a very funny movie called Looking for Comedy in the Muslim World by Albert Brooks, there's a scene where these like CIA guys talking to Albert Brooks, and they're like, oh yeah, no, Chris Rocky's so funny, so funny. And then Albert Brooks says, you know what? You know what's a cardinal rule? Universal rule for all comedians? We don't like to hear about other comedians. (laughs) Yeah. And the other cardinal rule is that if you want to soften up a comedian or entertainer, whether he's a professional bowler or not, you can be just aspirational like myself, just acknowledge that you've read something of his that you've liked. <laughs> or just make any comment about the funny. If something funny and makes you laugh, comment on the funny. And they will be, and that comedian will be your loyal, undying friend 
for life. <laughs> this is Michael Kornbluth, host of the Doodle Dead Year podcast, dad-friendly entertainment for you and me. Talk to you soon.